One of the easiest and quickest ways of getting across an idea visually is through the use of the cartoon. People are attracted to cartoons because they love to laugh. And it's the cartoonist who is able to combine humor with ideas. In the beginning stages, sometimes referred to as blocking in, it becomes very obvious that the circle or oval-like variations of the circle can be an excellent way of beginning the cartoon. Start by concentrating all of your attention on the circle. Practice on all variations of the circle. Draw freely, but firmly. When you have accomplished this and can draw the circle well, you have the basis for making cartoons. For instance, a head can be drawn simply by using nothing but circles, or parts of circles. By combining circle shapes and altering their sizes, you can draw all kinds of things. After your drawings are completed, it's well to analyze them to see if your finished lines have accomplished their purpose. Your cartoon should be pleasant, lively, and appealing. In the beginning, if you are patient while practicing these simple things, you'll find that soon you have developed the ability to extend them. Even the seasoned professional cartoonist uses the circle for blocking in. Many times the subject in finished form will seem to be very slightly influenced by the circle. But if we study more closely, we find that this cartoon cow is built almost entirely with circular construction. Drawing expressions may seem complicated to you. The cartoonist, through simplification, shows us how easy it can be. The elements which make an expression are the eyebrows, the eyes, and the mouth. The nose may remain unchanged. It has always been the practice of good cartoonists to use the mirror in planning expressions. His own features will reflect to him the necessary information that he needs. For a smile, we notice several basic things. The eyebrows are raised. The eyes narrow into a crescent shape. The mouth turned up at the corners. When we have this information, we find it a simple matter to transfer it to our cartoon. 
For a frown, the eyebrows are in a different place. They're closer to the eyes. The mouth is, of course, turned down. We may exaggerate this in our cartoon. Crying is a more complicated expression, but it too can be broken down into essentials. The eyes and eyebrows are in about the same position as they were in the frowning expression, but the eyes are now closed and the mouth is open and turned downward. There is no end to the number of expressions you can figure out when practicing in front of a mirror. Merely simplify them for your cartoons. It makes no difference from what angle you draw your expressions. The basic idea remains the same. In cartooning, there is no real standard for proportion. Therefore, the cartoonist can have fun in drawing things humorously, rather than as they actually are. The extravagant nose on the cook gives him a special sense of arrogance. Animals are favorite subject matter for the cartoonist, especially when he can make them seem very human. There is no rule for size in exaggeration. Accentuating certain objects sometimes contributes to the idea. Exaggeration may also deal with emotional themes. Like this man suddenly falling in love. We know that this doesn't happen, but the effect is amusing and the point comes across if you take advantage of your right to exaggerate. There are several ways to get the feeling of action or movement in cartoons. Simple stick figures can give you the general structure of any pose you're going to draw. Study all types of action. Notice the position of a person running. A simple outline will then accomplish your statement. Here is a car, quietly standing still on the paper. A few motion lines here and there, a shadow underneath, and a tilted position are enough to suggest that the car is in action. Drawing the same form in slightly differing positions is another way of showing action. A man drawn with his head in three positions seems to be in utter confusion. He just doesn't know where to turn. Cartoonists also use words and implied action to give movement to their work. Through the use of the motion picture camera, cartoonists have given us a whole new world of motion. But remember that all the cartoons moving on the screen are actually many still drawings in different positions of action. In the finished motion picture, the still drawings are combined by use of the camera into an animated cartoon. Remember that the circle will be of great help to you in creating cartoons. Circular variations will make it possible for you to draw all sorts of things with a free and flowing movement. Expressions are made by using the eyebrows, the eyes, and the mouth. Remember, the mirror will help you in forming cartoon expressions. There are several ways of showing action. You may use motion lines around the figure. You may repeat a form over and over in differing positions. 
use lettering and suggestion, and above all, observe and learn from the attitudes of objects and people in action. Exaggeration is used to make your cartoons funny and effective. There is no rule about exaggeration in cartooning. You must rely on your imagination. To become a professional cartoonist takes years of study and training, just as it does for any highly skilled profession. You may never wish to become a pro, but you like doing drawings that you can put to your own use. Add this to your skills and enjoy cartooning just for the fun of it.